This has no start rails. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. And tonight we're gonna photograph the Milky Way using the 500 rule and the NPF rule and see which one it's better. Let's do this. Let me just explain you what is the difference between these two rules and why they exist. So let's start with the 500 rule and use as an example my setup over here, which is an R6 with a full frame and the 15 millimeters Lawa F2. So I pick up the number 500 and divided by the number of millimeters of the lens. Okay, 500 divided by 15. The answer is approximately 33.33333. Very important, the R6 is full frame. If it's not full frame, you need to calculate the 35 millimeters equivalent, so full frame equivalent. For example, if this lens was in uh, APS-C body, that number should be multiplied by 1.6, that is about 24 millimeters. So, 500 divided by 24. The answer is approximately 20.833333. So, reducing to 20 seconds, 21 seconds. Now, I turned down uh, quite a bit. The light uh, of the camera won't interfere with my shots here. Now, following the 500 rule, I have 33 seconds to photograph the Milky Way. So, let's do that. Although we are respecting the 500 rule, there is some star trailing visible here. So, I reduced the shutter speed. Most of my shots are 30 seconds, but even then it has some trailing. But don't get me wrong, I could use this for social media, no problem. But for printing, I am a little bit more demanding, so no star trails. Now then, the NFB, it's way different. So the NFP takes in count the aperture, the size of your sensor, the size of the pixels of your sensor, which is calculated in millimeters or millions or whatever it's called. And it's very much complex, okay? It was created by Frédéric Michoud in 2010. So pretty damn recent, comparing with astrophotography stuff, <laughs> very recent formula, okay? NFP stands for, I have no idea. I imagine it stands for N for the unity of aperture of the lens, F for the focal length of your lens, and P for Mu, that is the Greek uh, name of that, whatever it is. It's a very complex, way more complicated formula that, well, you need to calculate. And it's very simple to calculate. There is a free way to do it. Go to the website. They're gonna reference down there. Scrolling down in the page, you have the part in English that, well, you can input your numbers or you can use an app. For example, I'm gonna use here the photo pills. You must scroll down to spot stars. I already input the value. So the 15 millimeters of my lens, F2, that's the aperture that I'm gonna use. And the angle, this angle, it's a little bit complicated to explain. So it's the angle from the equator from the sky, our sky, okay? And which angle is from the equator? So the best way to show you this is actually go to the night AR. So you see that there is the, the equator is here, 12 and the angle will add. So it's zero, 30, 60 and 90 degrees at the north, north uh, pool thing. Okay, so the Milky Way, at the time that I want to do this, which the Milky Way will be over there, okay? And it's a roughly 20 degrees, okay? If you don't know the angle, just put zero. It's a rough number. If you want to be rigorous, you can do that on the Stellarium software for your computer. You also can activate the angle there. And yeah, around 20, 21. So 17.9, almost 18. Let's shoot, let's shoot that. Now let's do the 17 point half. Uh, I'm gonna try to get 17 and then stop. So let's do this. So this has no star trails. 
as promised the NFP didn't fail me so very cool. But as night photographers we are looking to recover the most of light as possible. And that now begs the question, from 33 seconds from the 500 rule to the 17 seconds from the NFP rule, how much light did we lose? So, here are the photos side by side with no editing, as one stop of light in shutter speed is the double of the previous number, gaining from 17 to 34 seconds one full stop of light. So, 17 seconds compared to 33 seconds isn't far off of losing one full stop of light. Yeah. So, there is no better solution? Yes. Yes, there is. Well, the most keen of you probably already seen that this camera is in a very bizarre tripod head. This is actually is a star tracker, move, shoot, move, star tracker. This should allow me to make longer exposures than limited to the 500 rule or NFP rule. So let's try that. I just made one minute and a half exposure of shutter speed and uh, there is no star trails. So let's push it to two minutes. After two minutes, I started to get star trails. In theory, if the star tracker is perfectly aligned, configured, it's possible to get even longer shutter speed. From my traditional 30 seconds to two full minutes, I gained two extra stops of light. Excellent! And I had the luxury of reducing the shutter speed from 3200 to 1600. One less stop of light. As the camera was following the sky, the landscape got motion blur, of course. For that I made a second photo of 2 minutes with the star tracker off to be photoshopped and blend the two pictures together. And the big question. Does it really matter which rule will you use and why? Well, my honest opinion, yes. For example, I did photograph this picture some years ago and it has a little bit of star trails. This picture had 30 seconds of exposure, although I used a 14 mm which gave me 35, almost 36 seconds of exposure following the rule of 500. So, and it, if we pay attention, we can see a little bit of star thrills. Not that much, but a little bit. Now, for operating, of course, I would go use the NFP rule, okay? Well, but if it's for Instagram or really to fill your eyes, and if you don't feel comfortable losing a little bit more than one stop of light, I will stick with the 500 rule. If you have something like a good aperture lens, really honestly, ignore the 500 rule and use an FP or do stacking. That is a way better solution to get high details as the photography of the Milky Way. And here we are, a single exposure to photograph the Milky Way has its own quirks and rules. But what is the best for you? Well, you have to test it on your own, with your own gear and with your own lenses and see what is the best for you and for your own taste. And there you go, a really new thing that uh, we learned today, uh, tonight, I mean. So, drop a like if you learned something, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel, till next time, see ya!